Hey, honey buns, it is Jen, and I want to come and talk to you guys about crowded business ideas that still work. I know that a couple of the ladies from the Pretty Money Gang group um, have mentioned, and I've seen other people mention it in the comments, pretty much saying that a lot of the business I, business ideas that are around are actually crowded. So let's just get into some, some house rules. Make sure you're grabbing my 50-point checklist for the brand new business owner in the description below, okay? Let's move on. Most businesses are not crowded. They're just competitive. So check yourself, okay? Most businesses are not crowded. They're just competitive. So if you're a little scared to compete, then maybe, you know, you want to rethink some things. You might want to go walk, go, I said walk. You might want to watch my other video where I talk about being confident as a business owner, okay? Competition means that there's still a market and you can still win. Just because there's competition does not mean that you are losing. That means you just need to stand out within the competition. Let's just get into it. Some business ideas that are crowded, but you can still do. You can still work them out, okay? Online boutique. Now, we know certain, you know, between Amazon and Fashion Nova, the online boutique game seems like it's online, but there's always new, brand new rising business owners that are making sure their presence is on point, okay? Their branding is on point. Their presentation, now presentation is important when you're selling clothing because just don't take mock-ups and throw them out there. Nothing wrong with the mock-up, but you need to be having the boutique clothing that you have, and you need to be either having it on somebody, or if you have a different type of boutique, you need to be having the product in action, okay? Long gone are the days where you could just throw up a picture of something frozen in time. You need to be actually having video of this thing happening in time or people wearing whatever it is you're selling. Okay, this can be cost effective for you and your customers with online boutique because online boutiques can either be where you're either reselling what you already have or you went and you bought something from maybe Alibaba, AliExpress, DHK, and you are just reselling it on your online boutique. Okay, so don't sleep on the online boutiques. You still can do it, but you need branding and presentation to make sure that you're getting your items in front of the right customer, okay? The next thing that we're gonna move into is T-shirts. T-shirts is still popping, okay? I'm gonna leave two people that I think that you need to go follow, okay? One is Crystal Lee, and the second is, oh my God, um, ah, something Banks, I'm going blank, but he's dope. Go check out those people, right? Because T-shirts is just a matter of brand, slogan, catchy and a recognizable platform brand meaning like for example what i have on here is crystal's Lee, crystal lee's a girl plus god right she's the one who started the whole wake price slay t-shirt and she pretty much created a brand because she is a woman of faith and she figured girl plus god and she even has a girl plus god planner and pretty much she branded it where it's for a specific type of person Okay, and the slogan is catchy, cute, simple. I can go and recreate that design in Canva right now if I wanted to, because of course I'm dope, duh. Um, but you can do the same exact thing. Literally, that shirt. I know she has specific shirts she likes, but literally, you guys, I have a brand new shirt booked and braiding, and I literally created that on Canva for free and put it on a T-shirt. Okay, so. You want to make sure you either have a slogan that means something to your audience or just have something that's catchy, okay? There are so many slogans that people say that are not put on t-shirts and you can literally capitalize on a catchy slogan, put it on a t-shirt and start to sell it. Now, the reason why I'm going to say is sell your t-shirt on a recognizable platform is because you want, if you're brand new to selling t-shirts, people need to see very familiar platforms like if you go from Instagram to Shopify, people have seen Shopify before. If you go from Facebook to PayPal, people have seen PayPal before. People know Facebook. But if you are selling your t-shirts from some random website that nobody's never heard of, sis, don't do yourself a favor. Don't do that. You could even now sell your shirts on Etsy, right? You can connect your Etsy with Printful and you can literally sell shirts from there. 
right? So make sure if you're gonna do shirts, you need to have a brand around it, something catchy, a slogan that means something to your people and use a recognizable platform. The next business that people think is super saturated, overcrowded, but can still be done is fitness. The real thing you need about fitness is you need a story, right? That is relatable to somebody. You need a relatable story, whether that's your story that you have from your own weight loss story or your own fitness journey, or you have a story of someone else that you've helped, right? What you want to do with your story is you want to be able to resonate with somebody else. And then you want to have results, right? There's nothing like a before and after picture with the fitness journey and you're the director of the fitness journey. Okay. You want to be putting out helpful content that can be tips, that can be tricks, that can be meals, that could be recipes. You just want to be helpful as possible when it comes to the fitness industry, especially because everybody's looking to make a game, right? All of us. This is no secret. I'm going to try to sell you something. You're going to try to sell somebody else something. We're in business. But the thing about helpful content is that you don't want it to always be salesy. You want it to be helpful. Okay. Everything does not need to be a sale. Your content should be so helpful that people want to look for something to buy from you or people want to look to share your content, like your content, promote your content, okay? And then you want to create products that work, right? You want to create meal plans that work, digital downloads that are useful, right? You want to create those things that actually work and help your clients. So the fitness industry is oversaturated with people selling you bullshit right? Let's just be honest. It's oversaturated with people selling you crap, but it's never oversaturated for genuine people who have a story, who have results, and who have helpful content and products that actually work. The next business idea that is oversaturated, overcrowded, but you can still do, is makeup. You can be a makeup artist. Like this picture to me was so dope because um, it pretty much has a story to it where Rihanna handpicked this person, I believe from Instagram, to do her makeup, for her makeup line. That is so awesome because little did that makeup artist know that Rihanna, who started her makeup company, would choose them to be the specific person to do makeup, right? So that person can now forever say, I've done Rihanna's makeup. Not to mention, uh, um, not to mention probably makeup models that have a name in the makeup industry that people in the makeup industry will know. Now, here's the thing about being a makeup artist. I need for my makeup artist to show the hell up. There are a lot of people who are makeup artists and they're very flaky. And I get it. You're a makeup artist, so you're probably busy. But some of these makeup artists are shady, okay? Not shady and shady, but they don't show up. So if I'm up here thinking you know, I'm going to use you as my makeup artist and I have somewhere to go tonight and you flake on me, that's not cool. So what I need you to do as a makeup artist to differentiate yourself, to stand out in the crowd is have a high show up rate, okay? The next thing I need you to do as a makeup artist to stand out is be professional, be professional, be professional. Mm -hmm. I need you to be professional. Here's why. Some makeup artists who may not who may be makeup artists for the hustle and not for not went to makeup artist school and all that jazz or cosmetology school and all that jazz is that they have a tendency to be unprofessional show up late or respond when they want to um they don't do follow-ups they're not really asking you what you want so you can stand out from the crowd by just being professional answer your phone Respond to your text messages, answer your DMs when people slide in your DMs about an appointment, okay? Not about asking them random questions, but if people are hitting you up for an appointment, right, you need to be responding. And then you want to also create you a makeup brand, meaning what kind of makeup do you specialize in? Is it drag? Is it elaborate? Is it elegant? Is it natural? Is it um, event makeup, right? You, you want to brand yourself as something. We know you're a makeup artist, but we want to know what do you do specifically? And then you also want to let people know if you're willing that you are willing to travel, right? Some people want for it, their makeup to be done at their house. Why? They're about to get out the shower. They're about to put on their outfit 
and they want their makeup to be immediately done right after they're um, getting herself together. So you offering the travel will definitely put you above other makeup artists who only want people to come into their store or to their counter, okay? And then you guys, the last but not least to get into is hair, right? Selling hair. It is, <laughs> there are so many people selling hair, but here's the thing. When you're selling hair, you got to really, really dig deep. When you're selling hair, you're not really selling hair. You're really selling a lifestyle. Okay. You're really selling a lifestyle. Yes. Don't ever get it twisted. You are selling a lifestyle. Now, the thing that's going to have you stand out from the crowd is you want to have your branding down. So that's your packaging. That is your shipping. That is your payment processing. You, you want to have your brand and setup down packed, okay? And you want to make sure that it's cost effective for you, the person you may be going into business with, or you and your customer, right? Hair is important to women. So you want to make sure that you just don't grab hair from Alibaba, AliExpress, all these places, and just stick it in, stick your name on it and send it. You need to be testing the hair. You need to be making sure the hair is quality because there are a lot of people selling hair, but they ain't selling no quality hair, right? They selling you some, some stuff that, that just ain't right, okay? That just ain't right. But they're selling it in the sake of saying they sell hair, which you don't need to do that. You want to be able to create the lifestyle and the brand that represents the type of hair that you're going to be selling, right? A lot of people that are dominating when it comes to hair, it's one reason and one reason only. They have a brand that, that reeks of a certain type of class, okay? A certain type of luxury, a certain type of style. And many people... Okay, want to be associated with a certain type of lifestyle, right? A certain type of class. So if you can sell that to people, they're going to buy your hair, right? Over the other person. Because if I come to you and you're telling me how to wash the hair, style the hair, um, curl the hair, reuse the hair, and I just go to somebody's post and all they're doing is selling me hair, I'm going to continue to come back to you because I know that you're invested in the lifestyle of the hair, not just trying to sell me no bundle of hair, okay? And just so you know, hair is lucrative, especially if you buy it from a seller that is from one of those other websites um, that I mentioned, because what we pay for in the beauty supply is not what it's paid for at that lot bundled price, right? Literally, you can get 18 inches straight, uh, wavy or straight yakky or... Um, Malaysian, all of that for 20 bucks. Okay. Of course, you got to wait for the hair to come. You have to inspect there. You got to make sure the hair is good. But you could turn around and sell that same 18 inch hair, Malaysian. Okay. 18 inch bone straight for $100. You just made a profit of $80 when you get into the hair business and the hair industry. Okay. But you got to be careful with the hair industry because, again, you buy from these places and you really don't know what you're getting, right? And I've heard a lot of horror stories about people buying things that never show up. So what I suggest to you, if you're going to get into the hair industry, definitely buy sample packs. Have a budget for samples, okay? I need you to have a budget for samples because it's going to come down to you buying the hair. Is it what you thought it was going to be? And can you get a profit from it, okay? So you guys, all of these businesses really boil down to you. One thing that I said that was overall, crowded business ideas that still work, work because you're going to build a brand. So make sure you're checking out my last video where I talked about branding your business. There is branding in four steps, okay? I'm, I'm gonna put the link, let it slide up. So you guys, again, I need you to check out the 50 point checklist and remember, that these businesses are not crowded, they are competitive, and competition means that there is money to be made and you can still win, and there's room for you. Make sure you are downloading, listening to my audiobook, There Is Room For You, and I'll be talking to you guys later. Bye, you guys.